Hey guys, welcome back to yet another YouTube video. Uh, this is the final episode, episode 6 of my 2021 Supercars season preview. Um, obviously with the with the actual season starting um, tomorrow, of course, well, of course practice, two practice sessions already happened uh, on, uh, while I'm recording, it has happened when I'm recording this. Um, I might maybe upload this maybe later tonight, maybe, maybe early tomorrow morning. I don't know, but, uh, but yeah. Um, so, um, I will be, uh, I will have a, um, I will have a playlist, um, at some point up there somewhere. Um, <laughs> I think it's up there or up there. Um, during this video and uh to and so you can see all five or all well all five now then it's going to be six episodes of um of the supercar season preview uh so there's not so so there's not one not two not three not four not five not six but seven drivers that i'll be talking about um four rookies uh one being will brown jake kostecki Sane Goddard and Bro and Brody Kostecki. And then the other three, of course, are uh, which is uh the the three drivers who I'm expecting to make up the numbers uh in in this championship in 2021, and that is Jack Smith, Gary Jacobson, and Macaulay Jones. Uh and also at the end of the video I will be doing my season predictions and of who do I think will be champion, who I think will be uh, who, who I think will be a surprise and all that, and also I'll be making some bold predictions as well. Uh, so let's get into it. So, so let's start off with talking about um, appropriately uh, with the two er the two rookie Erebus drivers uh, in the field, and that is Will Brown and Brody Kostecki. Um, so, so let's let's actually talk about them together, shall we? Because they're both the same team. Um, and I will be doing the same thing with Jake Kostecki and Zane Goddard because they're also from the same team. So, um, I want to run you through some stats real quick about their about their their two separate um, um, Super Two seasons last year. Um, uh, firstly, we'll start with Will Brown. Uh, he finished second in the championship, of course, forty-seven points behind Thomas Randall, who I still, which I still cannot believe that he is not a full-time driver. I still can't believe that. Um, now, the seven races that were uh, that were um, that were uh, that were held um, in the season, he had two pole two pole positions, two wins, six podiums, seven top fives, seven top tens. Which means all of them were top fives, and no DNS. So he finished all seven races. Um, on the other hand, Brody Kostecki, um, he you know, he finished eighth in the championship, and the reason why he finished eighth in the championship was because he missed out on the final race at Bathurst because for for the Bathurst one thousand because I, I don't know why. Maybe I think it was had something to do. Uh, oh yeah, I remember now. Eggleston, Eggleston Motorsport, because um, their team is based in New South Wales, and that was at the height of um, New South Wales. As um, or maybe no, they're, no, no, they're from Victoria. Sorry, they're from they were from Victoria, and that was at the height of um, Victoria's um, um, pandemic struggles, and and that was when they were. During during or uh, uh, during lockdown, um, so um, so he only ran five races, um, but even though even though with the team he's still ended up partnering with Anton Di Pasquale at at, at, at the Bathurst One Thousand and caused a rare mistake out of a certain guy by the name of Jamie Winkup during the race, um, so uh, the stats here five races. Uh, also, uh, pretty much the same thing. Two poles, two wins. Both of those wins came at Adelaide, actually. Uh, I think I, I would assume they were both at Adelaide. 
that he's Brody's two wins. Uh, four podiums, four top fives, and five top tens, and finished all the races. That meant you know, all his five races that, that he competed in. So, so yeah, um, the, the expectation. I don't think there's any expectations on these two, um, because because even even though David Reynolds and Anton Di Pasquale did very did very well. At Erebus for the last three years, um, since of course, since of course Anton went to the team in 2018, uh, it, they've done very well. So, um, and also of course these two, uh, of course that uh, well Will Brown's been an enduro driver for the last three years, and Brody Kostecki only was an enduro driver, uh, well for Erebus last year. So, uh, a pretty pretty big step for especially for Brody to to go in um who do I think will be better will be better placed out of those two um f for me it's gonna be Will and I'm saying this because of course he crashed out during practice today um during practice today and there's possibility he won't even like start the Mount Panorama 5 at both races in the Mount Panorama 500 um, there's a possibility of that happening, but, um, yeah, but I believe Will, 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 um, I think Brown will, um, will be the best out of those two, uh, in terms of, of being at Erebus, uh, and things at Erebus, so, so, yeah, now let's move on to, to two rookies, at, uh, at at Erebus to two other rookies. I'm saying rookies because they didn't do the full time. They, they shared a car, shared another 34 car la at, at Matt Stone Racing last year. Um, but now, of course, both of them get it do 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 supercar season full time for the first time, and that is um, and that is Jake Kostecki and Zane Goddard. Um, so, um, so yeah, of course, of course, got out of moving into the car that was, that, that, that was vacated by Gary Jacobson, who he's now gone to team, who he's gone to team Sydney, which I'll be talking about later on. Um, so I'm going to read you through some stats real quick and you can be the judge on who was the best, um, in the, who was the best out of the two in this season. So of course, um... Goddard finished higher in the championship, uh, uh, higher in the championship. 25th he, he finished compared to Jake Kostecki, he finished 27th in the championship. Um, Goddard f had f competed in 14 races compared to Jake Kostecki's 13, obviously, um, because of the shortened season. Um, it, it, the, best, uh, the best qualifying, qualifying wise, uh, Goddard was better. Um, Qualified, his best qualifying effort was sixteenth. Jake uh, Jake's qual best qualifying effort was seventeenth. Um, result wise, Goddard scored the only top ten finish. Out uh, scored scored the only top ten finish out of the shared between the two cars. He finished tenth at the second S S Sydney Super Sprint round. Uh, he was in race twelve, and and while Jake Kostecki finished fourteenth uh, in the Darwin Triple Crown, it was in race fifteen. And Kostecki and and Goddard finished more finished out of the fourteen races. He finished he only, he finished uh, twelve of those twelve of those races compared to ten um, from Kostecki, where he only had he only had three DNFs. So so yeah. So theoretically, um, with the stats wise here, um, Goddard is was the was the more was probably the better driver out of those two. That's why I probably deserved that that place and uh, that's to be Gary Jacobson's replacement. Um, but you got but you guys can be the judge on that. Comment down below who was better, who you think was better. Um, track on on track wise, was it Jake Kostecki, Jake Kostecki, or Zane Goddard? You guys can vote for that down in the comments. Uh, session section down below. So uh, uh, the expectations for these two, 
The same thing with Royal Brown and Brody Kostecki at Erebus. I don't think there's any expectation. I, I, I think for me, they're... Um, I can see them maybe... I, I can see them maybe do... Well, uh, do um, occasionally, maybe for three or four races, qualify inside the top 15. Or, or maybe... Um, or may or maybe qualify the or, or qualify or, or maybe and and also finish the odd race inside the top ten or something like that, like Goddard did last year. Um, but instead for both of these drivers, so you know you never know. I think for me, they will be probably maybe maybe um, almost like there. I think for me, there. Um, it, it, it's hard to put it. Uh, I believe uh, I, I I don't I don't see them as the as the uh, see them as, as the uh, they see this lineup as the worst, but I don't think it'll be. Uh, I don't think they will. I don't think they'll set the world on fire. I don't think for me straight away. That's that's just my opinion on that. Uh, now let's move on to the free drivers who, are, as I said at the start, at said at the beginning, are probably going to make up the numbers. Uh, this season, um, so let's start off with um, Jack Smith. Um, of course, he's in his sophomore year last year in his rookie season. Um, had the one top ten finish, which was in uh, which was in race eleven of the championship at the second Super Sprint race. Uh, best qualifying effort was thirteenth, and he and he finished most of the races actually. He only had one DNF all season. Uh, yeah, but unfortunately, ended up finishing twenty second in the championship, and he struggled for most of his first year. Um, so for me, Jack Smith, I believe for me, um, I think I think for me, um, as I said, I think he's going to make up the numbers, and uh, and I believe that. Uh, I think it'll be the same. I, I think uh, I think it's time to uh, just uh, to show. Uh, I think for me, in my opinion, he didn't. I don't think he should have. I th I think BJR should um uh, put him up to their supercars program a, a way too early, in my opinion. Um, I thought maybe there's a lot of drivers, even though that they weren't a part of that BJR fold, that were good enough for that seat. I don't think Jack Smith. The, the, Survive in that seat. I mean, how is it fair that it, it, it is this? I might maybe put, put it. Maybe I'll do a rant about this in a full in full detail in another in, in a in a later video in a later date. Um, that Tom Randall he ended up he, he won the Super Two Championship last year. Finished second in the in the year before to Bryce Fullwood in twenty nineteen, and he and he doesn't get a full time seat while Jack Smith. Who didn't win? He hasn't won a race. I think he didn't win a race in Super Two. Didn't finish on the podium in Super Two, um, and didn't win a round. Um, had a, had a couple of top fives and top tens every now and again. You know, I think he ended up finishing about eighth in the championship in 20, 20, 2019, and he ends up getting a seat at BJR. And and for for me, the probably the main reason why BJR wanted um, to. Elevate Smith into that into the supercars team was because they wanted to run that fourth car. I believe if they didn't run that fourth car, then he would be still be in Super Two by now. That's that's just my personal opinion. Uh, you guys can um, comment your opinions about that in the comments below. But like I said, um, I'll do I'll save that for a la for a later date. Uh, save that rant for another video at a later date. Um, so yeah, uh, then we move on to um, Gary Jacobson, who's at his third different team in three years. Obviously, he was with Kelly Racing or Kelly Road Racing, as it's now called, uh, in 2019 uh, when it was part of the four car uh, operation. Um, then he moves, and then after that team started to scale down to two cars with Rick Kelly and Andre Heingardner, he was moved out and. Moved over to Matt Stone Racing, and now that because because Jake Kostecki and say God and Zane Goddard have joined the team, he was bumped out of that one, 
bumped out of MSR in 2020, and now he's moved over to Team Sydney to be teammates with Fabian Coulthard, who has proved in the last he's proved he's proved he's proved in the last almost decade now that he's now a, a, he's a regular race winner. Um, yeah, but even though even though it might be tough for him uh, this year with Team Sydney, um, so let me read some stats real quick about this uh, about Gary Jacobson. So fifty seven races, he's uh, that he's only had seven DNFs in his entire three uh, two season career. Um, so if my if if my calculations are correct, might be correct. <laughs> I think that is about maybe about oh maybe about an eight about between eighty to eighty five percent finishing rate, May, uh, something like that. I'm not I'm not I'm not a mathematical genius, but um yeah, but I, I believe it might be something between eighty to eighty five percent finishing rate in his whole um supercars career. Uh, his best qualifying finish was eighth in twenty nineteen when he was in, when he was in the Nissan at the Winton Super Sprint uh, in race thirteen, and his best his best finishing uh, best finish was actually seventh, which was last year in at race eleven in the second Sydney Super Sprint round uh, last year. So um so yeah, uh Gary. Uh, uh, so now my expectations of him um. My expectations of him are pretty much probably the same as the other drivers I've talked about. Not going to set the world on fire. Maybe maybe he'll do like what Chris Piffer did last year, and that's have because uh, I remember I think Chris Piffer had a cu had a couple of uh, good qualifiers and and good results. Um, but uh, but yeah, but I don't think he'll set the world on fire. Um, and uh, and and yeah, I think it's just gonna just gonna be there to hopefully to survive, hopefully get into a second season with another team after, of course, getting thrown out by Kelly Racing and then thrown out by Matt Stone Racing. Um, but uh, but yeah, but who knows? Um, about that, I I think I think for me, he I think he can. Get a qualif maybe get a couple of qualifiers in the top fifteen, maybe even a top, maybe even a top ten start, or and then or, or and obviously a top ten finish, maybe who knows? Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I think that's probably my expectations to go as far as that for um for uh, for Gary Jacobson. Now the final uh driver I'll be talking about before I move on to my season predictions, um. Is Macaulay Jones, and this is the uh, he he what is his first season in the BJR Supercars team. He was technically in the team, in the team, but it was it was unfortunately with the Tim Blanchard Racing team, which has now gone out on its own, and of course with Tim Slade, with with, with the Ford Mustang, which I said in the previous I think it was in episode before episode. Uh, not not the last episode. The episode before that, I said, I, I said this. And I'm going to say it again. Gee, that cool drive livery looks better on a Mustang than a than a Commodore. To be honest, um, so so yeah, um, but now this is the first year he's been with the full Brad Jones Racing Supercars team. Of course, he, he of course he's of course if everybody knows him, he's the father of Brad Jones, uh, not a son of Brad Jones. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, bro, get it together. Um, let me do, let me say that. Say, let me say that sentence again. He is the son of Brad Jones. Um, I was good about to say son a moment ago, but uh, but father just came out. Don't know why. Um, but yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna run through some stats real quick about his um. About his two year, about his two years in in the in the Blanchard team, um, fifty seven races he was with the team, um, three only three DNFs and one did not start, which was in his actually his very first race because of course if you don't know, I uh, think it was in that same in that on that same day he had that massive crash at turn nine when his brakes failed and and had that massive accident. 
um, yeah, but, but then, of course, in the last two years, three DNFs, um, which has been fantastic. And 2020 was probably his best year. Um, his best qualifying effort was ninth, uh, in the second Super Sprint round, uh, in race nine of the championship. And, and his best race result was actually an eighth in the females in the next race, um, in the, in the second Super Sprint round. Um, so, um, so, so yeah, so, it's, so 2020 was uh, perhaps a good year for him. Um, but I've also got some stats here about his full-time Super 2 career with the Brad Jones Racing Team. Because he actually did sort of pretty well, actually. Um... And he got and he got better as the seasons went on, and that's why. And, and as I said, and that this this move for me made more sense than Jack Smith's move to the Supercars did because because obviously he was ready. Clearly, uh, 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 on the contrast, I think Jack, in my opinion, Jack Smith wasn't. Um, so sixty eight races he uh, Super Two races he raced in, or previously called the Dunlop Series. Two pole positions, zero wins, obviously, three podiums. Well, I think he won one race at Bathurst, I remember. But, but I think that got taken away from him, maybe, after some sort of penalty, maybe. Post-race penalty or something like that. Um, 17, top, 17 top fives, 41 top tens, and only six DNFs in his entire three-season career. And that included, of course, two did not start. Um, so, so that's, so, so he has been, um, so he has been in the Brad Jones Racing stable before in the Super 2 and basically running as the third car, um, or fourth car actually, if you count 2020. Um, now he's, offici he's officially in the Brad Jones Racing Supercars team this year, uh, and I, I think he can, Continue on the improvement that he made in 2020. I I can definitely see that, and uh, 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 I can definitely see that, and maybe maybe even like um have more top tens. Maybe even maybe even crack. Maybe do an old uh, an old. Uh, 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 maybe have an um have the odd race where he finishes inside the top five. Maybe in a, like an absolute crazy race or something like that. Um. I know that's probably pretty lofty, pretty lofty expectations for Maka, but uh, but I can I can definitely see him improve again in twenty twenty one, and um and back up his probably his, it, it, by his standards very good twenty twenty, uh have a couple had a couple of top ten had a, had the top had the top ten start had the top ten finish last year and uh and I think that uh, I think it's I think it 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 to prove uh, he'll. Think he can prove that um that uh, prove that uh, he's Macaulay Jones, not Brad Jones' son. So um, but hopefully he can get it together. So that's it for all the drivers. Um, that I've talked about. I've talked about all twenty four drivers in these in these six episodes. Now it's finally for the for finally, um. To end this season preview, we have to go and do the season season predictions and bold predictions. So let's go to season predictions and should we start from the bottom or go to the top or should we go straight into the deep end? Now nah, I now nah, I think we should go um, save the best till last. So I think uh, so so of course there is six of these which are first time winner, first time winner, best rookie, biggest disappointment. Biggest surprise, runner-up, and of course, series champion. Um, in this, um, so a self with first-time winner. Um, so that this is basically out of any driver who has won a supercar race, uh, who's guaranteed any driver. So is guaranteed to win their first race or have uh, their get their first have to get their maiden the supercars win first. And I think that will be Bryce Fullwood. Um, some people might say, "Oh, what about what about Andre?" Well, well, 
well, Andre's name, I think, will get brought up a little bit. We'll get brought up a bit later. So just wait a minute there. I think maybe I can see Forward getting his first win um, pretty early on in the season than everyone else thinks. Um, I think in practice, I think practice he's been um, today. Uh, practice today, he's been he's been doing very well. Um, so I believe. I, I think for me, Bryce Forward would get his first win uh, quicker than what everyone else thinks. Maybe inside the first five, six races, maybe of the season. Um, best rookie. Um, I even though he crashed out in practice today, and possibility that he might not, um, he might not compete for the rest of the weekend, but still. I think that's um, but still, uh, I think he'll be the still be the best rookie is Will Brown. I think, uh, based on experience, I mean he's got I think he's 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 been ready for this supercast jump for years, and um and, and I, I think he'll capitalize on it and and be the best rookie. Maybe finish like maybe between tenth and fifteenth in the championship, maybe. And be the best of the rookies. Uh, biggest disappointment. Uh, this might this might shock a few people and maybe offend a lot. Uh, well, it will shock and offend a lot of people as well, especially Jamie Winkup fans. I think Jamie Winkup's final season is going to be a disappointment. Um, because judging on his back end of twenty twenty. I would suggest maybe that might carry on into the into this season. I, I um, maybe he finishes maybe outside the top five in the championship, and that would mean he's a big disappointment. I think for me, um, but I think for me, uh, I think for me, uh, can, um, uh, Jamie Winkup, I believe he'll be just, he'll be the biggest disappointment I, 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 in terms of. Turns a position in the championship. I think I, I think there's a possibility that he might finish outside the top five, it, 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 based on his form uh, in the back end of 2020, for sure. Um, the biggest surprise uh, that will be Andre Heimgardner, and I think this is what I think. I think he'll finish. Uh, I think he'll finish. I'm soon. I'm confident he can finish top ten in the championship. Um, and not and not just get for, and not just get his and not just get his first win. I can see him maybe get two, maybe even three wins, um, because obviously, of course, of course, last year, uh, rode rode well in twenty twenty. Uh, his first year on, on board the Ford Mustang. Now, now in his second year with the Mustang, I can definitely see him, um, winning, uh, winning winning races in twenty twenty. And and be and 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 show and show the supercars world that he can be a regular podium contender, a regular top five con regular contender every weekend for a top five finish or be up there in qualifying. I, I I can definitely still see that. I can definitely see that out of Andre. Um, runner <laughs> now the final, the most important two runner up in the championship. I think for the second year in a row, I think it'll be Cam Waters. Um, but I believe he'll come closer than he had, than he did in 2020. I think, I think it will come close, it will come, come close. And I think I'm, I, 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 and this, and this was not in one of my bold predictions, but I, I, this was, I thought in my head, I think the championship will go down to the final race of the season at the, at, at the Gold Coast 500. I think it'll come down to the final race. I'm very, I'm hundred percent confident in that because I believe now that we've now we've Scott McLaughlin off to America. Um, it, it, I'm not just, I'm not saying that Scotty is the reason why the reason why supercars are not as close as it is, but now that with Scotty gone, it's it's it, it, the field's ev it field's it, it equalized again. It's equalized now that with Scotty gone. Um, but yeah, even but even no, probably it, it, back on the Scotty one. It's even that's even going to go two ways. Either 
he goes down the um, willpower and Scott Dixon route where well, there's three paths. The first path is be will, be like willpower and Scott Dixon, D Scott Dixon, where they go over the Indy car and make it their life. That's what it is to become an Indy car champion, win the Indy 500, and all that. The second route, uh, the second road, uh, road is to go down the Marcus Ambrose Road, where you be, where you go to America for a decade, and leave, and, and then come back to Australia, and thinking that you've um, uh, thinking that. Uh, the cars are different. Uh, the cars are the cars are the same. I think oh, I can still do this, but actually you can't um, because Ambrose only drove uh, drove only one championship round and one non championship round before he retired, before he quit and handed the reins over to Scott Pye uh, in 2015. Or he'll go down the Craig Ro Clay Rounds Road, and because remember back in back in the late 90s when of course Lowndes was. Um, mate, it was, of course, making, of course, was making roads, and of course, he, well, back then it was called the Australian Touring Car Championship back then, back in 96, and then he moved to Europe to do Formula 3000, and when it was not possible for him to do another season there, he came back in 1998 and won a couple more championships, uh, Supercars Championships. That could possibly be what the road is there for Scotty. Um, but yeah, but back, uh, but back on this, uh, I believe Cam Waters, I think he'll be way closer to the championship, but I don't think, it, I think for me for the second year in a row, I believe he will be, uh, runner up and the champion and now finally the champion. I'm c very confident about this. I think it'll be Shane Van Gisbergen. Um, he's been chasing that second title for a long time. He came close in 2018. Um... And and of course and of course if if luck hadn't if if luck had 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 been good in the first half of twenty twenty maybe would have would have been up there fighting out with Cam Waters for second in the championship, um, but I I think for me, um, the one thing that has convinced me to bet for Shane Van Gisbergen to bet it, it, I think it, it for me. The reason why I believe he will be the champion in 2021 is because of the back end of 2020, not just the Bathurst champion, not just the Bathurst win that he had. Uh, he, um, he in the second half of the season was probably the most consistent. Or well, he and and Scotty were probably the, the two most consistent, or, or or count Cam the most consistent. Uh, the, those three were the most consistent drivers in the Supercars Championship. In the second half of 2020, in my opinion, and and I think for me, with uh, I think with Scotty gone, I believe he'll be the new the new top Kiwi in the in 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 the championship. And I believe he'll um he'll be the one that will well and he will claim. I think, in my opinion, his second championship. Um, at, at, and at, as as of course the Red Bull and Pole Racing team moves into a into a new era in 2022. Um, now, finally, for finally, let's move on to uh, my bold predictions. I've got six of them here, um, and um, uh, uh, here. So number one. Uh, so the first one at the top will be um, Todd Hazelwood and Andre Heimgardner to get their maiden supercars wins in 2021. Uh, of course, I mentioned that the Andre Heimgarner one. I think another one. I think Hazelwood. I can see him winning, like, m m see him winning at maybe like one to two races in twenty twenty. Um, that's just my opinion. Um, yeah, yeah. I think those two definitely, uh, and also accounting forward as well. As I said, I think those two, those three. Will be will be the ones to grab on the list as maiden in their uh, to grab their maiden supercars wins in twenty twenty one. Uh, the second the second one is Will Brown to get Will Brown to get at least one podium in twenty twenty one. Um, that one's gonna be a big call. Um, if uh, if if 
if the if today's practice session is even to go by, then maybe maybe my that bowl prediction might be wrong. But um, but yeah, uh, but I think for me, Will Brown, I, I think he can adjust to like being a life being a full time driver very quickly, and uh, and I believe that he, he I think. He can get. I think he'll get multiple top tens, multiple top fives, and, and maybe grab a couple of podiums. I don't think he'll grab the win. Um, grab uh, grab his his maiden win in his rookie year. Maybe that might come in twenty twenty two when, of course, the Gen Three rules come around. Uh, there, but yeah, and of course with the Camaro coming in, obviously, so which makes me so happy, happy <laughs> that the Camaro is coming in twenty twenty two to fight off those pesky Mustangs. Um, number three, this one, this, this bold prediction uh, is loosely based on this weekend. Um, Shane Van Gisbergen to claim both poles and win both races at the Mount Panorama 500. I, I, I can definitely see that. Uh, I, I, well, I, I, well, I used to see that happening. That was until... Um, he, uh, uh, he's, uh, he was struggling for comfort around, around the track, um, today, uh, but, um, but yeah, but I believe, I believe for me, um, it, I, I think he'll, he'll, I think he's one of those guys where he, if it's up to qualifying or a race, uh, he gets it together and I think, uh, uh, Gizzy will do, will do that. Uh, the four, uh, uh, bold prediction number four, uh, ten drivers or more to win rate uh, to win races in twenty twenty one, and here's a sample of them. Well, just ten drivers, but <clears throat> only just the ten drivers. I think these are these are the guys who I believe will win races in twenty twenty one. Uh, 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 I'm already list off already uh, others that have. Uh, <laughs> I was I've already mentioned in this video as well. Shane Van Gis uh, 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 and there as follows by the way, no particular order. Shane Van Gisbergen, Jamie Winkup, Cameron Waters, Anton Di Pasquale, uh, Will oh I said Alex for a second. Will Davison, Chaz Moster, um Bryce Fullwood, Nick Perkat, Todd Hazelwood, and Andre Heimgardner. Now you might be mentioning you ha I haven't said I haven't said David Reynolds. Well I think he can win a race this year. But that's just a sample of ten. That's just a sample of ten drivers. Um, a sample of ten drivers, who I believe, will win races in twenty twenty one. As I said, I said ten drivers or more. So, so yeah. Um, uh, bold prediction number five. This one is Fabian Coulthard to score Team Sydney's maiden podium. Um, that might be possible. That is possible um, because Fabian, we already know he's. Uh, I think that's a smart signing. As I said, I think I said this in an earlier episode. Um, it's a smart signing by by Team Sydney Techno. Uh, I, I, I think I think Team Sydney. I think will do better in their second season in the Supercars Championship. But I believe that this year will be will be the year that they get their first podium. Maybe not their first win, but maybe their first podium finish. Um, that will come with Fabs uh, at the wheel. And the final prediction: this uh, this is based off twenty twenty two. Um, and this is the bold prediction. Uh, well, for some people it might not be, but for me, uh, but some people probably it is. Uh, you guys can be the judge on that. Uh, bro uh, number six. This, the final bold prediction number six. Brock Feeney to be named as Jamie Winkup's replacement. Um, for me, the re uh, uh, some people might say, "What about Tom Randall? What about Tom Randall?" Well, I, 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 I'm not going to start. I, I, I don't. I, I'm not normally one to start rumors or anything, but I'm going to on this occasion. I think the po the, the reason why I don't think Thomas Randall is going to be um, at the team. Uh, in 2022, is because of course not only he has a contract, but there might be the possibility in tw next year in 2023 that Thomas Randall might go into go into the seat of Tickford to possibly replace Cam Waters because there might be the possibility maybe in, in the future maybe of DJR maybe being interested in him. 
And if that happens, I'm not going to be surprised. I won't be surprised. Because for me, in my opinion, I think Will Davison, for me, is clearly a a short-term solution. It's clearly a short-term solution. I'm, inter I'm very, very interested to know how many... If you guys might correct me down in the comment section below. How many years is... Um, is Will Davison going to be staying staying in the team for? Is it going to be one year? Is it two years? Um, I don't know, but I, I, I can see I can see DJR possibly getting uh, sniffing around for Cam Waters, and when that and when that happens, I I, I don't know. It, it, it maybe um, it, it, he it, he get that gets the better of him, and basically. He, Besides, oh, I'm going to leave Tickford for DJR. Or that Tickford loyalty stays with him and says, no, nah, I'm not. I'm just going to stay at Tickford um, in, 2020, in 2021. Or maybe the possibility, maybe, that maybe during that time in 2020, 2020 next year and the year after, James Courtney decides to retire. And that meant that would be when Randall steps in to that car. I don't know, but um, but yeah, but I don't see Tom Randall going to going to Triple I I don't see it. Uh, it's only it's it's for me. It's going to be Brock Feeney, um, in my opinion. Um, I mean, he's 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 eighteen years of age next year. He's going to be turning nineteen. Well, well, he's seventeen years of age. He's turning eighteen this year. Now he'll be turning nineteen next year. Um. Can you believe? Can you believe? Uh, can, uh, as I said, he's seventeen. He's eighteen years of. Is he? Uh, is he seventeen or eighteen? I believe. No, he's eighteen years of age. Yeah, he's eighteen years of age, and he's three years. And I, uh, just the context, I'm t I'm turning twenty one this year, on in July this year. I'm turning twenty one. He is eighteen, and he's possibly maybe going to be replacing probably one of the greatest. To, uh, one of the greatest touring car drivers, Australian touring car drivers, we have ever seen in Jamie Lynn Cup. That is unbelievable. <laughs> it's unbelievable for me right there. And I believe that I'm confident that he'll do well. Uh, and hopefully, Gizzy, uh, hopefully Shane Van Gisbergen is going to be the one that is going to be a very good teammate to him. And not only to help him um, very quickly, hopefully, and also with Wink Cup in the team manage managing role, uh, that will that will fast track Brock into um into into hopefully a, a, a hopefully plus a, a, a not into a future champion that Triple Eight will be very proud of in the end. So that is it for the, those bold predictions, and that is the end of this video, and that's the end of this season preview series. Um. I will be uh, I will be doing um which a, a video which will come out tomorrow and that is uh, I'll be ranking the liveries um I'll be ranking the liveries um for um <laughs> yeah ranking liveries in terms of best and uh, what's the worst livery what's the best livery. Um, and also give why I, and also give why I've put it there, and, and also, um, and also my, and also what what do I think should in, what do I think should I, should improve should what should good this color to this car or that amount of color or a little amount of color to that car. I don't, uh, 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 yeah, you just you just maybe have to find out. And also, I will be doing. Um, hopefully, um, you know, hopefully very race, hopefully be doing my own like race, race review. Um, so tomorrow, obviously when, I, when I'm recording this is going to be, uh, when probably when this comes out, uh, will be when, um, the supercar season starts. Um, so yeah, uh, so, uh, so uh. So yes, yeah, so I hope you guys are looking forward to that. So and so as I said, um, at some, at some uh, probably was some point during this video, there was an annotation at the top, uh, at, at top of the screen, uh, about um, as a as a butterfly is just coming, is just coming here. Um, got a bit distracted there. Um, that's 
um, it's like now it's just hanging on the screen now. Um, that's um, it, I'm actually now getting actually fully distracted now by, by this butterfly that's just coming into the room, coming into my bedroom now. Um, it, 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 with the playlist, the season preview, and obviously, of course, like this video, share this to all your friends that are Supercars fans. Comment down, comment down below. Uh, who do you think? Who do you think is going to be Supercars champion this year? And who do you think will? Um, who do you think will win the opening race um, tomorrow? As I'm recording this, um, well, uh, uh, t uh, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow as I'm recording this, and today as I'm, that's actually going to be this video is going to be released. Um, and and somewhere down there. Um, click the big red button, which is name subscribe, and click on the notification bell and switch on notifications to get notified when I next um, upload. So, um, so yeah, so that's the end of this uh, of the Supercars 2021 Supercars Championship Season Preview Series. Um, yeah, it's uh, it, <laughs> yeah, it's been very tough. It's been very tough to do when. Uh, but uh, but finally got through it in the end, um, and hopefully to do more of these um, when it comes to of course for maybe Formula One, MotoGP, and and all the other sports. Um, uh, but yeah, so so yeah. But until next time, guys, I'll see you later.